Okay. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is a first for me, uh, giving a presentation this early in the morning uh, when the, the coffee is still going through my system. Um, and I also want to thank you. Uh, I, most of the work that I did on this presentation was done a couple of minutes ago and last night, but most of the work that led to this presentation was done over a couple of months. I have a number of people to thank uh, through this. Um, this is a very big moment, and I, I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, we're going to talk about open source a little bit, but I'm also going to tell you a story uh, that, uh, it, it, well, it's a story about an adventure, um, an adventure I've always wanted to do, uh, and it just kind of all kind of like fell into a, into place almost like a like a rom com or a, or a sitcom or some some kind of like serendipitous force kind of like made all these pieces come into place and it all just kind of happened uh, and I got to tell you about it. Um, working on open source these days, uh, the, the 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 dream at the beginning was that I could learn new technology by working with people and it would be really a great experience. You could, you, could, you could use the knowledge that you've gained and add it to the knowledge that other people have gained and together you could make something greater than what you could have made your, yourself. Uh, and um, I kind of feel that we've always had the pieces to make that happen, but I want to tell you a little bit about how it happened for me. Um, first, let me talk a little bit about this nagging little problem that I had been seeing over and over again in my uh, Drupal work. Um, and, and talk a little bit about the solution that we eventually arrived at called same page preview. Um, back when uh, I was mainly just building Drupal sites, uh, I would come in bet between the, the situation where I'm working with content editors and they want to have confidence that their changes that they're making are going to be good. And uh, Drupal 8 came around, and they offered this nice little preview button. Uh, fun fact, that preview button was around much earlier than uh, Drupal 8. It kind of always had been around, but uh, in Drupal 8, it's actually kind of really good. Um, content editors would have all kinds of crazy things within their editing process. Paragraphs, storage entities, uh, bricks, uh, whatever. Uh, within your, your content editing experience, you could have anything. And then at the bottom, you click that preview button. And what Drupal does, it says, all right, I'm going to not actually save this thing, but I'm going to take every little bit of knowledge that you just gave me, and I'm just going to stamp out a preview based upon what your current theme is. Sounds great on paper, right? Uh, when I showed this to content editors and I advocated for it, I walked them through it, I trained them how to use it, it was a problem. Uh, because they weren't sure that they hadn't saved that thing. And if you're working with content editors, there are schedules, there are bits that need to arrive at specific times. You need to have confidence that you didn't just rise above your rank and decided to publish this thing your boss was going to be uh, wanting to, to release later. Um, and so I kind of had a strong opinion over a long period of time that Drupal is great. Drupal's preview specifically is great, but we just need some kind of visual indication that they're not done yet. They're, they haven't published it yet. It's not out yet. Um, and so... Uh, I wasn't sure how to do that. Uh, but I, I kind of felt like that's what needed to be done. Uh, so that kind of idea kind of like stuck in the back of my head for a very long time. Uh, when did Drupal 8 come out? 2015. Yeah, so last, this year? This year? Uh, whenever uh, Drupal, uh, yeah, this year, uh, Florida Drupal Camp came around. And uh, I kind of Still had this idea in the back of my head, and then lightning talks came up as at that camp they do. We're going to have unconference, so we'll have a moment like that for everybody else too. Uh, the opportunity came out to just talk about whatever kind of crazy idea you got, and I was like, "Well, what about this?" Uh, and then, uh, and then I, I was uh, 
talking about how it would be really great to have something like same page preview. We could have like the, the content over here, and we have the preview over here. Wouldn't that be great? And then folks like Brian Perry was like, actually, that's kind of possible. And then I was like, uh, okay, well, if I could like wave a magic wand and like try to imagine what the user interface would be, it'd be like something like uh, like craft CMS. You know, if you've ever seen that CMS, you got the content over here, you got the preview over here, you type something over here, you see it immediately over here. Wouldn't that be great? And everyone was like, well, actually, that's kind of like what everybody needs. Uh, regular vanilla Drupal builds, decoupled builds, and uh, Brian was working on this thing called Decoupled Preview, so he actually had some experience with that. He was like, hey, why don't you look over here? Why don't you try this thing? Um, and so we uh, kind of all got excited about the idea. We kind of got to the whiteboard. We started charting some things out, trying to convince ourselves, like, is this a real thing? Could this actually be a thing? Could Is there some kind of scary roadblock along the way that could be an impediment to making something like this happen and then we started thinking about like well what do we need to do right now and what what's what's off in the distance um and then uh and then uh we we got really excited uh about the idea we started uh hacking on a few things um at a camp got over and we all kind of went home and it's like I, this really feels like it's something i, I just want to keep the energy going uh, I really wish we could just like, like have a couple more dev sessions and like push this push this idea forward. Um, and so we we kind of uh, hacked up a little bit and and created a version one. And this is where I attempt the uh, the, the the bandwidth of the system. Um, so uh, I should have my volume completely down, and this is supposed to be like a really rapid place. We just figured out how to like create a button. And you would click the button, and boom, nothing special. That's just Drupal's preview right there. We are able to use this thing uh, called uh, uh, the off-canvas dialog that the folks in Drupal made a long time ago to work with, like, Layout Manager. And, and some people have used it for some crazy things, but I'm not, I kind of think this is the craziest thing somebody's used it for. <laughs> I'm a little biased. Uh, we're just shoving that whole preview in the off-canvas dialog. That's an iframe right there. Modern technology. <laughs> uh, and, and so the idea was like, even with this, it's, it's great. You're able to like type something over the, over the left-hand side, and you have to click the button again in order to see that preview. But boom, right there it is. You haven't left the editing experience. You still have your editor hat on. You're not like a content reviewer. Like making sh like passing this off to somebody for them to review. You're still you're still in edit mode, and you could tweak your way to getting the content to look the way you like. And you can experiment. You can like try. I'm gonna add this crazy paragraph here and see if how that that looks like. Maybe they haven't finished the templates for it. Let's just see. And let's and then you'll you'll gain the confidence you need that everything on the left hand side is good because everything on the right hand side looks good. Um, and so. That was version one. Um, and at that point, this looked like it was going to be like a real thing. So we wanted to talk a little bit about where we started the idea and where we wanted the idea to go. Um, we got together on Slack. There's a channel in the Drupal Slack, drupal.slack.com, uh, called hashtag preview. And if you want to see like the history of all of our communication, it's the the it hasn't like been kicked out of of uh, the history yet. It's all there. Uh, and we started using uh, a tool called Loom. Uh, it's really great for creating the demos, like the demo video I just showed you. You get a little head, little bubble in the bottom, and you're able to like you're limited to five minutes. You can't ramble about uh, what what you're what you're working on. And by both talking through the details in precise communication over text and by able to showing uh, where we're at with demo videos, we were able to make some really good progress. Um, and uh, when we were started talking about the, I the ideal uh, user interface that we wanted, uh, we kind of debated a long time about the button. Uh, now the button is great. Uh, it does what it does. 
But like, if you look through all of Drupal's documentation online about how to get an off-canvas uh, dialog to work, they all talk about, hey, you just need to work on a button. You need to have this button, it needs to have these things, and then it works. But um, you know, we didn't really want to change the user interface uh, for the uh, editor. We didn't want to add. We wanted to use as much of core as we possibly could. And so uh, we started reworking this idea uh, for uh, version 2. And, and what was version 2? Uh, hopefully I fixed this link. Uh, version 2. Uh, let me see if I could just jump through my preamble of all the things I'm talking about. We had a checkbox, huh? <laughs> and, uh, and around that time, we were starting to get other people excited other than the original crew that we got together. And somebody was able to contribute this little feature here where if you, in the, in the title field, if you just start typing, uh, and let me, let me see if I can back up a little bit, you can see that change immediately. Um, I thought I had a slide here where I talked about the phases that we wanted to do, but I did not. Uh, so let me just mention it here. Uh, when we originally got together, we talked about how this idea could be implemented in three phases. Kind of like a build a bicycle by first building a unicycle kind of idea. Where it's like every step of the way, you've got like a deliverable thing. So phase one would be like, can you even get preview on page? Uh, through the addition of that button, clicking the button, seeing the preview. Second idea, the second phase, was seeing, uh, seeing that uh, a change dynamically. You're able to type over here, and you don't have to click the button. You know, that was the idea of the checkbox. We just have a checkbox to indicate that, yes, you want this, uh, this uh, same page preview functionality to be engaged and working. So you, with that checkbox is checked, as soon as you type over here, you see the change over here. Um, so that, that was phase two. And then phase three hasn't really been implemented yet, but we're still kind <laughs> of hacking on it. The idea of like uh, Im immediate, you know, like just have it feel like a live thing. You're able to type here, you immediately see the change over here, and maybe crazy things like get it to work in a decoupled context. Uh, like maybe the thing that's being previewed isn't exactly your Drupal site, but maybe it's whatever it's going to be rendered in. Uh, that's kind of like a, uh, a lot, lot of work to get there. Uh, but that, that, is, that is the end goal, uh, to, to have it work in lots of different contexts, not just the standard Drupal context. Um, back to the slides. Where was I? Uh, yes, the checkbox. Um, and so phase two... Uh, we were able to get a little bit of that responsiveness. You're still able to go over the left-hand side, and here I am typing into the body a little bit, and then you click on over to the preview, and then it's supposed to refresh you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got this video going on 2.5, the speed of I, which I recorded it. So, uh, But just trust me, we've got to be able to, to get it to work so that as soon as you click the preview, then the re preview refreshes and you're able to see. Um, so that's good. Uh, next slide. So phase two was done. Uh, uh, but then, Drupal 10. Uh, a lot of people know that uh, I love crazy ideas. Uh, and an idea that emerged in Drupal 10 was this idea of single directory components. And I became uh, very enamored uh, with that idea. But, but specifically, like working on a Drupal uh, feature, this this feature that we were working on, we were really proud of, and uh, could we could we integrate it with this new workflow that's emerging uh, in Drupal 10, where you can have your Drupal site, you could have a storybook, where you're able to see all your components, and then like a front end developer could jump into your project and engage with your project just completely from the context of the storybook. And then the Drupal side will benefit from all that work. They don't need to drive, jump into a, a, a Drupal theme or a template or anything like that. You can just reuse all that work just right there because the thing that shows up in storybook is the same thing that's used in, in the Drupal. It just, it just got, I just couldn't let that idea go. 
Uh, and so uh, single directory components uh, became uh, part of it. Uh, and uh, here uh, is my, hopefully, the demo that I linked uh, about Storybook. Uh, so here are a couple of buttons that I wanted to use in the user interface uh, that I implemented as single directory components, and they showed up here in the Storybook. The settings button was intended to be kind of like you click it and then it becomes a drop down of checkboxes and each of those checkboxes does a thing. Um, and then uh, I'm at the end of the video. No, I'm not. Uh, so right there. Uh, this would be how those buttons are aligned. Each of those buttons themselves are their own single directory component. And so you can create a component that compiles the components. Uh, and then, uh, and then that's that's what single page, uh, same page uh, preview is today. Uh, we're able to uh, create uh, this final demo uh, explaining how it looks like. And for this one, I'll turn the audio on because this one's YouTube. Should be regular speed. Hi everyone and welcome to this introduction to the same page preview module which aims to make Drupal easier for content creators. It's a module that is quite new. It was created at Florida Drupal Camp 2023 and the three folks who sort of got the momentum going are the uh, contributors you see on the screen. That being said, the idea of having some kind of enhanced preview in court is not actually new. There is an issue that goes all the way back to 2018 that talks about live preview as a capability that might be of value to editors and content creators within Drupal. In fact, there was a usability study that year where CMS novices tried out different content management solutions and it actually called out that the live preview capability within Craft CMS was really useful in terms of really giving those content creators the confidence that they were using the tools as intended and, and could really see their content starting to sh take shape as they sort of filled out the different fields. That being said, enough talk, let's actually get hands on the module and see how it works. So here we can see creating a basic page, uh, start to type our title in here, you can see that it does a live refresh as you type. Do things like grab an image out of the media library and immediately see that in the preview. And then if we were to paste this content, note that it's really on um, a change of focus. So as you move between different fields, it'll automatically update the preview to sort of show the editor that live sense of now that's a simple example. Let's actually take a look at something a little bit more complicated. Here we've got an event content type. Preview. <clears throat> and if we go through a similar process here of adding some different content, one of the things that I'll point out is that this content type is a little more complicated than our basic page example because it's actually using Layout Builder to or lay out the content as it will be displayed. And so we can see here within the preview that it's actually sort of respecting that layout builder layout and giving the content creator that sense of exactly how their content will be laid out. So not just showing them the elements, but actually as them be laid out. And then just to validate, we go ahead and save that. We can see that it actually was that accurate preview. Now, the intent has always been for this live preview or same page preview to be something that would eventually make its way into core. And in fact, there is already an issue that proposes this idea. So if this is something you're interested in, by all means, either you know follow that core issue. Uh, if there are ways you think same page preview could be better, by all means, open issues on the module. And that is same page preview. Cool. So that's where we ended up. And uh, we ended there uh, because of our uh, willingness to 
have crazy ideas. Started with a crazy idea, talked about at a camp, just like this one, where we were like, wouldn't it be great if I could wave my magic wand and get whatever I want? Turns out you can. Uh, you just need to make it, and uh, maybe the pathway is easier than you think. But it starts with the bravery of talking about your crazy ideas, because maybe they're not all so crazy. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? Add on to that the crazy idea idea. It would be really <laughs> nice if the preview would also do like an accessibility check and do a screen reader read <laughs> the content while you're doing it so you see which order things go or things like that. If there was a way to trigger a screen reader like by clicking a button or something like that. Yeah. Now, it is the case that we're able to see the preview both in the same page preview context and what I didn't talk about much, but what was on the screen was the button to see the full preview still, Drupal's preview capability. Mm -hmm. And on that page, you could have your accessibility tools ready to go and it's able to like go through the page and it's probably going to have like a little bit of more that it would save showing the the artifacts that Drupal's preview has, right. uh, but you would get a pretty good readout. Mm -hmm. So it's not a not a total miss, but yeah, it would yeah. be some kind of good way to indicate to the user that they could uh, kick that off and, and get that working. Yeah. Could you possibly split that onto a different monitor too, like a different window, so that you? If could... you click the button to show the preview on a new tab, uh -huh. you can tear that tab off your browser and put it on a different page. Mm -hmm. But to your question. If I edit over here, uh -huh. would I be able to see it automatically update over here? No, it wouldn't do that. It would just show you the preview. Not yet. <laughs> 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 there, there's, 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 there's so much uh, uh, crosstalk between yeah. the uh, preview pane and the edit pane that it is so great to have it in the same uh, browser window yeah. uh, that we could probably defeat if yeah. we were able to have it uh, address yeah. the other tab. You're right. <laughs> we can probably figure out a way. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I'm going to take, yeah. then I'll take you, Brent. Uh, so how does it, um, what is the mechanism used so that uh, when you're creating like a new element on the page, like paragraph or multiple e media, how does it watch? Like, how did you build that so that it's flexible enough to see all of the changes to like all the kinds of things that can happen. Good. It's doing less work than you think. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah, because Drupal's uh, Drupal has spent a lot of time building on a lot of excellent systems. It had Drupal has this whole concept of form state, which I'm sure you're aware of. Yeah. And the form state is what keeps track of every field that's in the uh, node edit page and every setting that it currently has. And all our module does is to attach to each field a JavaScript behavior that says, as soon as you change the focus from this field to something else, then kick off this logic that says generate a new preview and update the preview pane. Mm -hmm. And it uses the form state for that, okay. just like Drupal's preview system does. Oh. It uses We've just looked at what Drupal's preview system does. Mm -hmm. We did that same logic, but you're just triggering it intentionally uh, through custom code instead of allowing the system to do it. Uh, eventually, we took over the preview button that uh, Drupal's page has. So if you enable preview and you've got our module turned on, same page preview will take over the preview button so that if, to, uh, if, if, if you uh, don't want the preview pane up all the time, you click that preview button and it opens the pane. Mm -hmm. And then it does all the preview logic. Uh, Brian, and then, did you have a question? Yeah. And then, and we'll go here. Brian. For the record, I just wanted to clarify some of the origin story. <laughs> 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 an, an important detail, and I think a lot of open source projects could learn from this, was uh, early on when this came up at Florida Drupal Camp, you kept saying, I will give 
one hundred dollars to anyone who solves this. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I have yet to pay. And I'm not trying to say I want the money because one hundred dollars was the fun we had along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was very passionate about this idea. Yes, Steve. What are the content editors saying about this? I have yet to hear from one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, is this is this module in usage on any live websites? Uh, on the sites that I'm working on, mm -hmm. not yet. Okay. Uh, and I've yet to hear from someone who's actually using it. Well, we have it limited to people who are implementing Drupal 10.1 sites, so our audience is quite small. Mm. Um, and uh, there was an issue for making it work for Drupal 9, and the problem became really big uh, because of my decision to use single directory components, which requires Drupal 10.1 and should probably look at that decision again to see if we can get a larger audience. But um, it's it's really nice to when it's this little perfect idea with a very small uh, feature set and it can remain perfect. Uh, <laughs> but if I actually want people to use it, I'm probably going to have to get off of a couple of those those things that I fought for and widen its adoption. So does that mean you have to use single directory components in order for it to work? It requires single directory components. Do you, as a Drupal developer working on your site, need to create new single directory components to get this to work? No. It comes with everything it needs. So you enable it, it will enable all of its dependencies, and it will just work. So, so if I understand it correctly, like this module uses single directory components. Yep therefore this module can only work on 10.1 and up. Correct. But, yeah, but anyone else doing theming in any other way is it's going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's also a good example for you to uh, read up on if you're looking for a, an example of a single directory component implemented as from, from, a, from a module's perspective instead of from a theme's perspective. There are a couple of uh, Interesting hoops you got to jump through in order to get that to work, but it's actually easier than you think. Any other questions? Yes? Have you tried it with layout paragraphs as well? So I have yet to use layout paragraphs on a project, uh, but if it works in the content edit experience, it'll work with our module because we're not, we didn't implement our own preview logic, we implemented Drupal's preview logic. So. I would imagine that with the, the layout paragraphs module themselves would have spent time to make sure that it works with preview and there's not a lot that you have to do because it's like, hey, do you use form state? Good, you're good. <laughs> yeah, it, it works with regular paragraphs and layout builder, so I can't imagine. Yeah. yeah Give it a whirl. Good. And also, may I just make one small plug? If you have uh, feature additions, specific use cases that that doesn't currently work for, or just your own crazy idea, jump in our issue queue. Um, you see the, the link to the, the project right in here, and just, just post there. Um, been kind of busy organizing camp, and I haven't been responding to a lot of things lately, but I love this work, and I'll, I'll get to you. You have a person you know who you can, you can like, Punch my shoulder if I'm not getting uh, uh, feedback to you fast enough. All right. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.